the program that has been put together is comparable to The Art of War by Sun Tzu, right? If you have read The Art of War, it all seems very common sense and easy and gives you a pathway to be successful on the battlefield. So you came to my two-day program that helps business owners curate where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, where there's opportunities in the businesses and where the main threats are to the business. And so you're on the second day of that program. What's been some of the things that you guys have realized? I think the biggest thing is just how inefficient we have been doing it. Like we knew going into business, we could grow to be a billion dollar company. And we know that we can get there. We know it's gonna be hard and we'll figure it out. But after seeing a lot of the things, it's just, man, we could do this so much easier. And even Texas was like, man, I really wish we would have done this three years ago because it would have saved us a lot of scraped knees, long nights, just stress and ups and downs and having that pathway, right? Like that efficiency part of it, which like I said, we knew we could get there, but it, this is going to help it make it go so much more efficient. And I was talking to Heather last night. I told her, like, the program that has been put together is comparable to The Art of War by Sun Tzu, right? If you have read The Art of War, it all seems very common sense and easy and gives you a pathway to be successful on the battlefield, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's the way that I look at even just the workbook from the 360 program. It's written very simply and easy to understand. It gives you a direct pathway to be successful. All you have to do is implement it, yep. right? And we always talk about the basics, and that can be from pistol shooting to rifle shooting to patrolling to whatever. There's a very simple set of rules for all of those things, and you can be extremely proficient and expert level if you just follow those basics. And that's what I've gotten out of the last couple of days is understanding what those rules are and you will get the result. Yeah. So that's why we're, we're pretty excited to get back and start implementing a lot of these things and just doing very basic things very well. And that's what the top assault teams do in the world. Yep. They don't do anything special when you look at like SEAL Team 6 or the German KSK or anything like that. It's the basics. They do the basics right every single time without fail and that's all it is they go from being an amateur to a professional because they know how to make it they know how to make that perfect the and, basics and none of those organizations that you just mentioned or your teams would be any good if it was all about the individual only right if they don't function what makes them remarkable is the teamwork the teamwork when you're on it and you're going and you're grinding every day with the team and you're on the text threads, you're doing all this stuff and they always got, like talk about being on the train, right? You're on this train with everybody and you're riding it and it's so much fun. But you're gone 200, 300 days out of the year and you're out there a lot of places sometimes working crazy hours and that brotherhood that gets formed with those guys is like a bond that can never be broken. And then the day you say, hey, I'm done, I'm getting off the train, it literally stops. There's no more text messages with the guys. There's nothing, but that train keeps going. And so initially you feel like lonely. There's the brotherhood in the teams and then there's a brotherhood out of the teams. And it, that's where guys have such a hard time finding that there is life after the teams or service or other things like that. But you just have to also plug yourself into that brotherhood that's, hey, I'm no longer in the team anymore, which is good because that train has to keep going. Like they don't need to be hearing about how you're trying to grow a business to a billion dollars. They don't care, right? Yeah. Like they're happy for you. They want to help support you in that. They're, but they're trying to survive tomorrow. They're, yeah, they're dealing with a whole plethora of other things that they need to be focused on and dealing with because it's their life, right? Yeah. And so that is hard for guys, I think. Yeah, and that's been the gift of what we do now is being able to plug back in to not only, you know, the SEAL teams, but also all the different special operations branches and the conventional units and our international partners and develop these technologies for them and get to go visit them and understand their problem sets and what they're trying to overcome in the current fight, right? Because we haven't, I haven't been in Iraq since 2016, right? If you come out of theater for six to eight weeks, you are no longer relevant. Yeah you do not have a good operational picture of what's going on over there, right? And when you look at the current fight, there wasn't a drone in the battle space besides our own assets. And so being able to plug back into these guys and understand what their needs are, what their issues are, it allows us to go and develop technology that assists them to increase their lethality, increase their survivability, all of those things that they need to do. 2016 doesn't seem like that long ago because I just sold my business in 2016. <laughs> and you think about how you were fighting the good fight with the resources and assets you guys had then. And then you see things where people are 
taking and homemaking drones and putting grenades on them and you're just thinking you're fine wherever you're at. When you think about what those guys have to think about, how do you predict it? And yeah, I mean, it's very hard until you see it, right? And you talk about these big inflection points in the history of war, right? Tanks in World War One, and then seeing actually tanks being used with infantry correctly in World War Two, and the introduction of the airplane to combat and, and being used for not only reconnaissance, but offensive operations, all of these things, it's hard to even imagine it until you see it. It takes, you know, visionaries to be able to concept what that next fight is going to look like. But then you have a whole host of opportunities behind that, 